Hi, my name is Jacob Cox. Thank you guys for coming today. We're going to be discussing the science of spirituality and recognizing the patterns in nature and how that will help us to understand who we are, that we are not separate from nature, that we're actually a part of it. And uh, we're going to start with that. With the Fibonacci sequence, there's a pattern which is um, found by a guy named Leonardo Fibonacci, which he rediscovered. I didn't just discovered this, but he rediscovered the science. And it's, the pattern is the 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then you take this number and you add in the last number. 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, and so on and so forth. This number is in all things. It's in uh, every person, it's in every, almost everything in nature. And um, it, it comes up with a divine golden ratio, golden proportion, which is 0.618. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But it's a musical scale. Um, it's just very important that, you know, this is a scale that, of creation, how we were all created. And so if you take this pattern and you put it on the graph, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, you uh, actually, it comes out into a spiral. And, um, and in the trees, you see it here again. So you start with the trunk as 1 and 1, and as you move up in this, this vibratory scale, it, it starts to branch off. And your circulatory system works like this, your blood vessels work like this. Uh, lightning, rivers, streams, everything branches out into something else. So again, you get this uh, spiral, and the spiral is in all things. You see a spiral in the seashells. You see it in all the different types of plants, and the pattern of a pine cone. All, all kinds of plants have this, this spiral of life in it. It's, they all is in the small, as I like to say. This is broccoli. And then so you get to see again, so flowers, um, shells, leaves arrangement, they all seem to, to go to this pattern every single time. And it's not just the little stuff, but the big stuff. Our, our hurricanes and our galaxies are made in a very similar way. And uh, it's for us to see, this is something for us to discover to understand who we are, what we are. And understanding this pattern helps us recognize what we are. So it's in the hurricane, it's in the galaxy, and it's all the way down, the all is in the small, into the DNA. Your DNA is a double spiral, he, uh, double spiral helix wave pattern, which is just like the galaxy or anything else. And it also has this .618 ratio in it, um, which obviously explains the fact that, that this is a design, this is being created, that the universe isn't just randomly assessing in different places, it's actually being created with this musical scale. Your ear, um, and your face, you know, the length of your nose to the, to the width of your mouth and so on and so forth, all throughout your face and your body, in your arms and your legs, you'll see the scale over and over and over again. It's undeniable. You see it from the finger to the knuckles and even your legs, all your joints make up this 1.618 to the entire whole, the whole entire arm. You see it in, again, a better picture of the fingers. This is an instrument that, um, as you pull it out, it, the, this part right here is 1.618 to the hole. And you can see that in someone's finger, it's obvious. And if you curl up your hand, I think this is probably one of the coolest pictures I have when it comes to Fibonacci, is you have a spiral in your hand. There's no doubt about it. When you curl your hand up, there's a spiral there. Pretty neat. And so this is in all things. It's in animals. You see this in the, the color patterns of the bird, the, uh, the abdomen, and the different parts of the ant. The flower, your hand, your finger, wave patterns, you see this over and over again. It's a peacock feather and butterfly. This whole thing is divine proportion. Everything is set in a certain place, and that's no coincidence. It's supposed to be like that. So you see this in all different types of things. One thing you see it in is in the really small, the isosahedron and the hexagram. These shapes, um, even viruses take on these shapes, so they know the pattern. They know how energy manifests. They know how to um, take on this shape in order to do their business. You see it in the Parthenon in Greece. They're the buildings that were built in the pyramids. These things were built to this energy pattern you know, so they could harness energy. You also see it in stuff like sacred geometry, and it starts to help you realize that a pentagram is not something evil, but but if you know this technology, if you build a building like the Pentagon and you place it somewhere, the people who sit in that building are going to have power. They're going to have an energy. And we are all directing our energy 
to them. But it's not that it's an evil thing. I mean, you, you know, you see the star on the wizard, and you see a star on a, on a police man's uniform. Someone is someone deliberately knows that this is how it works. They put those symbols on people, and it gives them power. And there's no doubt. Everybody knows the policeman putting on a police suit becomes a different person when he puts on a suit and a star than uh, he was before he did it. So understanding all this stuff, I'm going to tell you how understanding all this stuff is important. How how it's going to give us all our power back, and how understanding this patterns and recognition is uh, going to empower us. And so it's through sacred geometry. You see these symbols everywhere. What do they mean? Um, how can they help us to further our evolution on? And uh, so again, the pentagram, building buildings in these shapes, uh, putting them in these, these kinds of designs, wearing stars on your uniform, putting stars on your flag. Almost every single country in the world has the pentagram star on their flag. This is the flower of life, very sacred uh, geometry. And this is the flower of life with the Kabbalah imprinted on the front. So you can see, and this is a great representation of fractals, that the Kabbal is a understanding of how everything works, but it's a fraction. So knowing it, but knowing other things are also going to help you understand the whole Christianity, Hinduism, um, all of these things are great understandings, but they're not separate from each other. They are all one and the same, and understanding all of them will help you understand the whole. So speaking of fractals, uh, mathematician Benet Mandelbrot discovered a math equation that once he plugged into a computer, he got this shape. And they call it the Buddha Bro because it looks similar to a Buddha meditating. And you can see here in different places, you have the same portion of this um, picture in the small and, and down deep in here. And as you zoom in, you get the same thing over and over again. Once you put this into a computer, you can zoom into this thing infinitely. It never ends. And it, again, it explains the lightning. It explains river systems. It explains that everything is a fractal. And this mathematical equation is a scientific proof of that. And as you zoom in more and more and more, you see the spiral again. It's, it's always there. You can't get away from it. And it spirals in more and more and more. And then you keep zooming in, and you get the mandel, Mandelbrot, the Buddha bro, over and over again. It happens every single time. It's really just quite amazing to see and understand it. Um, a guy named Ernest Cladney recently found out that by putting salt or sugar or sand, these were all crystalline structures, putting them on a metal plate and taking a bow and strumming it down the side, that vibratory frequency would create shapes. And he um, recorded all these shapes and put them all down and, and uh, for us to see and, and look at. And so you start to recognize these patterns. The same frequency always creates the same pattern. I think that's very important. And you start to understand that these, this music, this musical scale, this, this vibratory frequency that's being played, translates into nature. So there is a, there's no doubt there is a frequency being played throughout the entire universe. And when you play music or sound frequency onto a metal plate and they're standing on top of it, these molecules vibrate until they make a pattern. Your body is created of seven trillion cells, over seven trillion cells, and you are vibrating at a very high speed, but you look solid, but you're not solid. And so this sound, you know, in the Bible and other books they say, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Well, what is the Word of God? It is a sound. It's a sound that pumps through the entire universe, through the galaxy, and it holds the planets, it holds the earth, it holds the sun, it holds everything in place. And you can obviously see right there that this is being created. It's not just something that happens randomly. Even more recently, a man named Han Jenny took this, this concept a little further, and he coined the term somatics, which is um, bringing matter to life with sound, creating um, the same thing, although he didn't take a, um, a violin drum and, 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 strum, and strum it down the side. He actually hooked it up to a frequency meter, and as the frequency gets higher in these shapes, they'll actually get more complex. And as it gets lower, they won't be as complex. So this one is vibrating at a higher frequency than this one over here to the left, and then you can start to make sense. As the frequency picks up, things get more complex. So as our frequency in the universe picks up and gets higher, 
so does animals, so do people. And that's why there is no missing link, and you'll never find one, because as this frequency picks up, things change fast. Things change in the blink and the twinkling of an eye, and there is no evolving over millions of years into something else. Things change fast and it's abrupt. This is water and waves being generated by a sound frequency being pumped through it. So this is also water with the sound frequency, and you can see the perfect geometry of the shape. I made this picture. These are, again, the basalt on the metal table. This is the ohm sign, which has been used for a very, very, very long time. And you can see how I overlaid this picture onto the sound. And you can see the dots inside, and you see the dot on top of here. And that's just a fractal of the whole entire picture. So if that's a symbol for sound, it does make sense where that could be a possibility where that came from. This looks like a flower. This is cornmeal with a vibratory frequency pumped in it. So again, you can see how nature, flowers, and things like that um, come to that similar pattern. And again, you see how at the bottom these are uh, sand and salt and stuff being, being played at a higher frequency than the, the stuff up here. But the cool thing to note is these patterns are always the same every single time, the same frequency. It, it, it's not a uh, coincidence. This is a connection that we need to understand and learn. And so, even more recently, a guy named Dr. Emoto put water on, on bottles from the same place, water from the same place, and then he took a piece of paper, wrote on it, love, or took a piece of paper and wrote, hey, froze those bottles of water extremely fast, and then looked under a microscope. What he found was when you put things like thank you and love and appreciation, you get snowflake-like patterns. When you put hate and heavy metal music and you make me sick, I want to kill you, you get a much different pattern. It definitely doesn't have the geometry. It's not as beautiful. Even did those people's names, scenarios, emotions, uh, pictures of um, landfills. One of the things that I find that was probably one of the most awesome crystals that he did was one called Conveniency Food versus Home Cooking. Water from the same exact place with just words written on it, then froze fast and looked under a microscope. The water that has home cooking on it looks like a beautiful crystal, and the one that has conveniency food, the word itself, that, vibratory, that vibration of writing that word, is obviously a lower vibration than that of home cooking, because it looks like raw sewage, the, uh, the other one does. So that's, that's very, I think it's very empowering to know that you can get the meat or fruit from the same place, but if you bring it home and you prepare it yourself with a loving attention to your family, that, transmit, that energy transmits into the, to the food, as opposed to someone who's getting minimum wage to cook it for you and uh, they're not so happy to make it, they're just making a dollar and moving on. So, again, so the Emoto crystals um, help us understand that. And these are certain thresholds, 396, 417, 528, 639. Um, at certain thresholds, when you play this, this vibratory frequency in water, it changes the, the water into a snowflake-like crystal. That is important. Because also these frequencies also are the Gregorian chants in Catholic churches. That all oh, the sound that you hear, the reason people felt good when they went to church when they heard these sounds is because what is your body made of? It's made of mostly water. So when the music you listen to, the thoughts that you think transmute into your body. And I would say if a person became unconditional love and your body turned into snowflake like crystals, what would you become? You would become a Christ. You would be someone who had reached a, a, a level that most of us don't attain because most of us are not unconditional love. We find it hard to love every single person or love someone more than we love a mother. But in all honesty, the, the goal is to love every single person out there unconditionally. So it helps you understand that these threshold moments in the in these sounds create what is a star matrix basically and that this is not an evil demonic type of symbol this is something that is it's, it's, it's us it's every single one of us but if someone can make you think that this symbol is evil then I can use it in my buildings and I can use it on my chest or on my flag that's how you influence people and make and then you're able to overpower them um, but when we take our power back we know what these symbols are game over. We win. So Max Planck, the father of physics, said all matter 
originates and exists by virtue of a force, we must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. So the sound that's being played through the entire universe translates into certain points where the Earth is going to have a higher vibratory frequency than others. And you know that Muter Triangle and different places like that, um, the Devil's Triangle, they have these anomalies, these crazy things that happen. And that's the reason why, because the sound being played is creating a shape to the Earth. And it's creating geometry in the Earth. So there's no doubt why people said there was holy ground in the past. This holy ground is a ground that actually emits a frequency that's higher. And why probably in the past there were people who their gods were on top of mountaintops in certain places. And that's normally where they met with them because they needed to be at those places in order to, uh, to live. So these spaces are all over the, all over the planet and uh, it's easy to, to see. So if, if, there's a, if there's a frequency being played through the universe that creates snowflakes, that creates nodes on the earth that seem to be high to high frequency, there's no doubt that each single one of us is a, is a fractal of the whole. So we all have this star pattern around us. In the past, people have referred to it as the Merkaba, your light body, your rainbow body, your astral body, and uh, Merkaba actually means a chariot to take you somewhere. So where are these um, light bodies going to take us to? We're about to find out. So I say welcome to the mystery. So this is the science of it, science of spirituality, the recognition of these patterns and understandings are going to help us to develop this body, this light body that's going to take us to the other dimensions.